Hello, I'm JW. This time I'm going to answer a question which a number of people have asked, and this is regarding AC systems, as in what you get in your house, and the deal where the direction of the current changes all the time, 50 hertz in the UK and 60 hertz in some other countries. So uh, how does this work and why doesn't it cause things to be shorted out? And what does it actually mean when we've got negative and positive? Now let's start with something fairly straightforward. And uh, let's have a look at DC to start with. So let's have a uh, bulb or lamp there. And then we'll have wires coming around. And we'll just have some power source down here at the bottom. Now in the DC system, you will have positive and negative. And typically it's assumed that the current will just flow from the positive and through the bulb and it will light up and then continue along and return to the negative. And this is all that happens. It goes in the same direction all the time, never changes, and that's all there is to that. Now, of course, I just point out that in reality, in terms of the electrons in the wire, they're actually going from negative to positive, but that doesn't matter here because the main point is that they're going in the same direction all the time. Nothing is ever changing. So we've just got positive and negative. Current flows from one through whatever devices we have and then returns to the source of power. And typically this would in the case here would be some kind of battery. And you might have some big old uh, lead acid battery type thing here. With the terminals on the top like that. And this you might think you might find in your car. It might be in the region of sort of uh, 12 volts or something. Maybe a bit higher and the engine was turned on. Now in this system we've got positive and negative. But you'll notice there's something that's missing here. There's no ground involved here. Because this system is currently isolated, it's just sitting there on its own. There's no connection to anything else. So unless you actually came in contact with one of the wires here, then nothing's actually going to happen whatsoever. And in a car, the ground connection is achieved by typically connecting the negative part of the circuit to the frame of the car, as in the metal parts. And you can now call this a negative grounded system, and this is how most vehicles are made these days. All it means is then if you uh, connected something from the positive section of the circuit and then a wire that frayed and damaged and it uh, accidentally came into contact with the metal part of the vehicle, then some fuse is going to blow and there's going to be a load of melting wires if it didn't. And by calling this the ground, it's simply because we've decided that the negative in this case is going to be connected to the framework of the car. We could equally have just connected the positive to the framework of the car. It wouldn't make any difference, and in fact some cars were made like that a long time ago. But uh, it doesn't really matter, it's just something we've chosen to do. In any event, the current still goes in the same direction. It doesn't actually make any difference. Now in an AC system, of course the power does not come from a battery, it comes from a generator far away in a coal burning power station, or more likely gas these days. And then it gets to your house via a load of wires. And then in the street outside somewhere there will be a transformer and the voltage coming there is going to be rather high in the thousands of volts. The transformer just reduces that down to say the 240 you would have in your house. So essentially we've got one half of a transformer there and this will come into your house and we're going to have our light bulb just as we had before. And the return of the power is actually just going back to that same transformer. Now in terms of the transformer here, it doesn't really have negative and positive because the direction is changing all the time. But if we looked at it in any particular time, we could say that this was positive at one particular instant, and when that was positive, this was negative. But then of course, if we looked at it a fraction of a second later, we then find that this was negative, and then this was positive over here. And that would change all the time, typically 100 times per second in the UK, which is where the 50 hertz comes from, because it's going from one to the other and then back again and about 60 hertz in other countries. Now again, this system here is not grounded in any way because it's completely isolated, just as we had with the car battery and things before. So in order to make it uh, our concept of ground here, we're gonna to have to put the ground in over here. And we're not gonna actually use the frame of the car because this is in your house. So what we're going to use essentially is the frame of the house, or more accurately, the soil and ground, whatever that it actually stands on. And again, just as with the vehicle, we're going to take a wire from one side of the circuit here and we're going to connect that into the ground, typically with a 
big metal rod of some kind buried outside. So now we've basically referenced it to ground. So just as with the car, if we had some kind of short circuit from this side of the circuit to the soil outside, there's going to be a big bang and the fuses will blow and so on. Now it's important to note here what positive and negative actually mean, and it's changing all the time. Positive and negative do not represent more and less of the same quantity. So you might be used to thinking of negative as something where you've actually got less of something, or less than zero. But in the case of this, negative and positive, all they mean is direction. So they're just markers to say which direction the current is flowing in. So in one particular instance it's going around this way, and then it's going back the other way, and then it's going this way, and the other way, and it's actually doing this, uh, say, 100 times a second or more, depending on where you live. It doesn't make any difference to what's connected to the ground. This side is still connected to the ground regardless of which direction the electrons are moving. So positive and negative is not less and more of something, and it's certainly not negative as in having less of anything or less than zero. It's purely indicating the direction that the current is flowing in, nothing to do with the ground whatsoever. So just as with the vehicle, if you were going to say uh, stand on the soil here, and you were going to get hold of this wire, then nothing will happen because this side of the circuit is always at the same voltage or the same potential as the ground. The fact that the wire contains electrons going in this direction, or it contains them going in the other direction, doesn't change anything at all. They're all going to return to the transformer. They can't flow through your body because the voltage between here and here is essentially zero because we've connected those two together. On the other hand, if you connected your arm up here, then you're going to die because there's a huge voltage here, and regardless of whether they're going this direction or that direction, there's still going to be 240 volts or whatever difference, so some of those electrons will either go down there and into your body and into the ground, or alternatively they will go the other way and back into the circuit like that, depending on what part of the main cycle we're actually in. So regardless of uh, whether it's uh, effectively positive or negative, it's purely the direction the current flows, Current flowing in either direction is more than adequate to kill people. It doesn't really matter. The fact that it's flowing is the main point. Now, as a final point, you might wonder why we actually bother connecting things to the ground at all. Because after all, in this situation, where we've got the transformer and some light bulb or whatever lighting up, no connection to the actual ground whatsoever. And in this case, if you stood here and grabbed hold of this, you wouldn't get a shock. And if you stood here and grabbed hold of that, well, you wouldn't get a shock either. And that's uh, obviously quite a bit safer. But the problem with this system in use in a large area, say as your street or whatever, is the fact you can't keep it in this form for very long because all you need is some fault, say over here, to ground like that. If that occurred, nothing happens because there's no path for the electrons to go anywhere. All we've basically now said is that this side of the circuit is ground. So therefore, if someone then touched this side of it, they would get a shock and die, and obviously this side they wouldn't. And this is fairly likely to occur, because bearing in mind this whole street of properties supplied from a single transformer, it's common in the UK. You've got no control over what happens in other people's houses, so at some point your lovely isolated system would get connected to ground somewhere, and then you have no control over which one is going to be the one that kills you, and which one is the one that's safe. And therefore it's much better to do what we did previously, and decide that, oh, this one is going to be the one that's connected to the ground, and therefore is the ground or the neutral wire, as it's called, because then you know that whatever you've called the neutral will remain that way, and then the other one, of course, will be the live, whereas with this arrangement, a fault somewhere could mean either one of them, then you have no control over the situation. So all main systems are referenced to ground in this fashion, purely so that then you have control over the which one is which, and then you know which is obviously the correct ones to connect in your bits of equipment. So that's how uh, AC systems work. And uh, just remember that uh, positive and negative in any system for electricity is not about having more or less of something. It's purely the direction that the current is flowing in. So negative just means it goes one way, and positive just means it goes the other. If you've got minus 9 volts, it doesn't mean that there's 9 volts missing, or it's less than zero. It just means that the current's going in the other direction compared to when it's plus 9 volts. 
And for an AC system, then the two wires you've got coming from the transformer, again, you could call them positive and negative at one point, and then negative and positive at the next one. That's purely the direction that the current's flowing in. AC does not mean that line and neutral are swapping around, because in an AC system, neutral is the one you've decided that's going to be connected to ground. And it always is neutral, it doesn't matter which way the current's flowing, it's always neutral. And line is always line, it doesn't matter which way around the current is flowing. Basically, neutral is the one that's safe and is the same voltage as the ground, and the line is the one that kills people when you grab hold of it. So those two never change, and the fact that the current may flow in a different direction in the circuit doesn't change anything either, because, again, if you're going to grab hold of the line and current's going to flow through your body, it doesn't matter which direction the current's going to flow in, it's still going to cause massive death and injury either way. So that's it for this video, and until next time, thanks for watching.